take a look at the definitions of Dexys. There are several definitions that I put here. The first is from Yule in 1996. Dexys is a technical term taken from Greek for one of the most basic things we do with utterances. It means pointing via language. Hello everyone, my dear students. Welcome to English Mantics and Pragmatic course. My name is Budeko Pranoto, and in this session, we'll be discussing about dexis and definiteness. Every language has deictic terms or dexis. Levinson, in 1992, asserts that dexis as a branch of pragmatic places it concerns to the relationship between language and context. It is certain that by understanding the concept of dexis, language user can accurately process the meaning of utterances. Through the comprehension of big concept of pragmatic, a subfield of linguistics, which studies the way in which context contributes to the meaning, people can understand what the message actually means behind utterances. So in these lectures, it is hoped that students are able to identify and illustrate types of dexis and definiteness in English, and also the accuracy to explain the concept and aspect indexes and definitions also become the parameter of the success in this lecture. So during the lectures, I will elaborate the concept and also the role of dexes in conversations and how it affects the meaning interpretations. So the first one will be talking about the definitions of dexes, and then the second one will be talking about the types of dexes, and then we will relate them with the context and also definiteness. Take a look at these examples. It'll take more than a pair of Levi's to make you into James Dean. And the second one, I'm starting to talk like Michael Jackson's. So maybe you know about James Dean, maybe you're not, or maybe you know about Michael Jackson's, maybe you're not. So James Dean is a popular artist at that time, and he is very handsome and also has a very um, close identity with one of the denim brand, Levi's. And also Michael Jackson is a very popular pop singer. I believe everyone knows about him. So the first example, it will take more than a pair of Levi's to make you into James Dean. We, you have the knowledge of James Dean. Also the second one, you have the knowledge of Michael Jackson. So the knowledge that you have about James Dean and also Michael Jackson is called non-linguistics knowledge. It does not come from part of one's knowledge of English in the same way as knowing the meaning of pair and also talk. So in this case, we're talking about someone who is pointing something using the language, and this is part of the concern of Dexys. So take a look at the definitions of Dexys. There are several definitions that I put here. The first is from Yule in 1996. Dexys is a technical term taken from Greek for one of the most basic things we do with utterances. It means pointing via language. It is clearly a form of referring that is tied to the speaker's context with the most basic distinctions between deictic expressions, being near to the speaker, like close to me, or proximal, versus away from speaker or distal, on your positions. So when I'm talking right now, so here I have the nearest positions from me as the speaker, and also when I point something that is close to you or away from the speaker. Meanwhile, according to Renkama in 1993, says that Dexys deals with the connections between the discourse and the situations in which a discourse is used. The word Dexys means to show or to indicate. So people use language to show something or to indicate something. And in terms of Dexys, we are talking about the positions, whether it is close to the speaker or far from the speaker. So in pragmatic, Dexys describes word or expressions in which the reference relies absolutely on context. So you have to understand the context in order to understand what it means by the speaker, what is meant by this by the speaker, what is meant by that by the speaker. So 
Moreover, uh, we have words that have sometimes more than one meaning in terms of it reference. You may have different meaning of the same word when it is referred to different contexts. Therefore, during the conversations or during the um, interactions between speaker and also the hearer, both speaker and hearer should have the same understanding to the context. So, if we are talking about the importance of DEXs, you need to see how DEXs play an important role during the communications. But according to Lyon, in 2015, DEXs is an important part of human discourse. DEXs is an important field which is studied in pragmatic, semantic, and also linguistics because DEXs refer to phenomena where understanding the meaning of certain words and phrase in speech require contextual information. Words or phrases that require contextual information to make sense are deictic. So, for all, uh, moreover, DEXs is also important field of language study for learners of second language because it has some relevance to analysis of utterances both in spoken and written text. Yule states that some words in language cannot be interpreted at all unless in the context like here, there, this, that, now and then, or maybe time marker like yesterday, and pronouns such as I, you, him, her, them are clearly interpreted. You also add that dictic expressions depend on the immediate physical context in which they utter. To interpret those ex expressions, the speakers need to share the same context with listeners. So, if we can conclude, essentially, DEXs concern the ways in which language encodes grammaticalized features of the context of an utterance or a speech event, and thus also concerns ways in which the, uh, the interpretations of an utterance depends on the analysis of that context of utterance. So, now we move on to the second part of the discussions. We'll be talking about types of DEXs. According to Levinson, um, DEXs has five forms, among others. The first one is person DEXs, the second one spatial DEXs, the third one temporal DEXs, and the fourth one social DEXs, and the last one is the DEXs of discourse. Let's discuss one by one. The first one is person DEXs. Person DEXs, as its name implies, it is talking about persons. So this information is grammaticalized by pronouns. Typically, a person singular pronoun, which is used for the speaker, second person pronoun for the addressee, and minimally, a third person category for a category of neither speaker nor the addressees. So in English, because this subject is English, semantic, and pragmatic, so I'll be, pay, I'll be paying more attention to the concept of English, especially on the idea of dioxys. So in English, we have singular, like I, he, she, and also it. For plural, we have we, they. And then for singular or plural, sometimes we can use you as singular and also plural in, in different contexts. But when we're talking about this one, languages are differ in um, in the amount of other contextual information that is included in pronoun, for example, in Arabic, they have more than this one when they are referring to um, personal pronoun in its language. So, the examples of person dexes in English, we have like um, John Smith says, I am hungry. So, the word I, it refers to John Smith, it refers to him, as the speaker of that sentence, it refers to his conditions because it would be different when someone say that John Smith is hungry because John here referred to he. It becomes the third person singular. Meanwhile, when someone say I am hungry, it refers to him as the speaker who are feeling the state of hunger. So you need to understand um, that each personal pronoun refers to each concept that they encoded with. So you can apply the knowledge of this one when you are having an examinations or when you have your TOEFL test in reading comprehensions. You have to understand which pronoun refers to which ideas in that reading passage. So 
your knowledge of DAISYS will be useful not only in the idea of semantic also pragmatic, but also can be useful in the another aspect of language examinations. So next one, or the second one, we have spatial DAISYS. So these didactic devices in a language commit a speaker to set up a frame of reference around herself. The idea of spatial, we are talking about space or locations. So take this simple example as adverbs of locations. So yeah, it refers to the locations of the speaker. So usually it is referred with the words here and also there. So when people say it's too hot here in the sun, so let's take our drinks into the shade of a there. So here and there, it refers to the position of the speaker here and they are moving to another position there. So it would be different if the speaker um, changed the positions from here to there, but they change the sentence. So if the speaker move, the interpretations of the adverb will be changed or will change, they call the shade here and their original place there. So the first sentence, it's too hot here in the sun. Let's take our drinks into the shade of a there. They are moving from here to there. But as they arrive to that position or that location, the locations, at first it is here, it changes into there. I'm glad that we moved here. I was melting over there. So spatial dexis here refers to the locations where the speaker located. So if we compare, yeah, if we compare later, I will give you an example of a Mexican language. So in English has two terms of positions between this, this, yeah, items closer to the speaker and that those items further away or far from the speaker. But on the idea of the location here, we have the concept of plaque plasticity. So it talks about how big an area is meant by here depends on the context. It may refer to a country, a city, a room, or a part of room, and etc. So the use of here doesn't always have to include the locations of the speaker because you can point a location on the map and you say I live here and it is not necessarily that you are there at the moment. But you can point a location without necessarily to be without necessarily that you have to be in that location at the moment. So if in English we have two terms, meanwhile in Spanish, yeah, we have three terms. In English we have here and there talking about the positions here close to the speaker, there far from the speaker. Meanwhile in Spanish they have three. Aqui means here, aji means just or there, and then ali of there. So pardon my pronunciations, if you have um, better pronunciations with this Spanish vocabularies, you may uh, do so. So like esto, close to the speaker, eso, close to the addressee, and then aquilo, close from both, sorry, distant from both. Yeah, meanwhile in English, you have only here and there, in Spanish, um, it has three. And then move on, uh, on the idea of spatial dexis, because we are talking about locations, we also can relate it with the idea of motions or movement. So dactic elements may also include information about motions toward and away from the speaker. For example, we have don't come into my bedroom, so it will be in contrary with don't go into my bedroom. So when, when a person say don't come into my bedroom, it, it is assumed that the speaker positions is in that room or in that bedroom. Meanwhile, when, he's, when he says, don't go into my bedroom, it is assumed that the position of the speaker is outside of that bedroom. So another example, he is going to leave the country. So the idea of sp spatial movement away from the speaker is mapped into times as a future event. Like he is going to leave the country. So there is a movement there from one place into another place or from one location into another location. And about the size of the, the area is, is divine contextually. It may refer to a country, it may refer to a city, room, or part of a room. Let's move on. The next one, we have temporal or time dexis. 
at its name suggests, time dexis is a reference to time relative to a temporal reference point. Typically, this point is the moment of utterance. Temporal indexicals are expressed in time adverbial like now, and then then, soon, lately, recently, ago, day, tomorrow, or yesterday. So, if you know the time reference here, you, you understand that in English language, we have tenses. So you understand how to use now, how to use then, how to use soon, and also how to use ago because we are talking about specific time in in your in your sentence. Because when you are using now, it talks about the current conditions. Meanwhile, when you are talking about ago, it talks about the past event. So another example we have now and then. Yeah, talking about now and then, or yesterday, today, tomorrow. So you can relate it with the distinctions in tense because when you use sentence in English, you have to use different types of verb in order to be in order to have an agreement with the time marker. So the next one is about the social dexes. So it explains about the social identities or relationship of the participant in the conversations. Terima kasih sudah menyaksikan video pembelajaran ini. Jangan lupa like, comment dan subscribe serta nyalakan tanda loncengnya agar kalian tidak ketinggalan informasi update lainnya.